This video is brought to you by JetBrains PHP Storm. I don't need to tell you, but as developers, bugs are a constant challenge. Everything in our power to test the code that we've created as we're creating it, but that's just not good enough. That's because our changes affect other people's changes in ways we can't expect, and their changes affect our previously tested code. And the dependencies in our code can upgrade, which can create a bug. If our customers find the bug, it makes them mad, and mad customers stop paying for our services. Wouldn't it be great to find a tool that can find bugs before our customers? In this video, we'll discuss how to use PHP Stan to find bugs before our customers find them in production. We'll talk about how to install it, configure it, do an initial setup, and run it on a command line. Hello developers, and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. PHP Stan is a static code analysis that we can use to validate our program for correctness. A static code analysis tool means that we don't actually need to run our code, and instead it inspects every line of it to make sure that it's good. As part of this, it identifies bugs and inconsistencies in our code early so a customer doesn't find them. It also improves code quality and maintainability by using some of its more advanced rules. We can use PHP Stand to enhance developer productivity because it's helping to look out for bugs we may not see until we do dynamic testing. Now, I'm a huge fan of static code analysis for a wide variety of things, including bug reduction, so PHP Stand is a perfect thing to add to our programming toolbox. You might be wondering what PHP can do for us, and it can find things like calling a non-existent method, calling a method with the wrong parameter type or count, and calling a method on null. It'll also do things like finding the wrong return type or forgetting to return the result of a method. Now, let's discuss an example of what PHP Stan can prevent. In one file, we might have this user class where we have a public integer, that's the ID. And then in another file, we're going to create a new user class and then display that ID. Now, if everything works, we can go about our day, but eventually we're going to realize that we need to refactor to properly encapsulate the ID. So someone's going to come along and say, well, that public property shouldn't be public, it should be private, and then change that. They're going to test the code that they're working on and see that everything is working appropriately and then move on with their day, but they're not going to see that other file. This change causes an error because it's now a private property. If we just push this, we may never see that it's being used somewhere else, and so our users are going to find the error. It's hard to find these kinds of problems because this can be lurking anywhere in our code base, but PHP Stand can find it with ease. Installing PHP Stan is simple. We just install it using Composer. If you're not aware of Composer, make sure you check out our video on using Composer in this channel. We will, of course, link to it in the description. To install it, we're going to do Composer Required Dev PHP Stan PHP Stan. Make sure it's a dev requirement so we don't get it on the production server. And then to run PHP Stan, we're going to run vendor bin PHP Stan Analyze and then dash L and a number and then the directories that we're interested in testing. In this case, we're looking at the app and test directory. Now, depending on your code base, it might spit out a few errors, or it might spit out thousands of them. This example has pages of them. There's two ways that we can get this down more to a manageable level. The first is that we can adjust the level. The level parameter is going to help control both the number of errors that PHP Stand finds and how much time it spends running. This is because the higher the number, the more rules that PHP Stand will run against our code. At level zero, we're running basic checks for things like unknown classes, unknown functions, and unknown methods. If we move up to more like level five, it'll be checking types of arguments passed to methods and functions. And then at level nine, it's going to be extra strict about mixed types. I'm going to start out at level three as it gives us a good balance without a bunch of errors in this specific code base. I want it to be at least at level five because I want that argument checking. More after this word from our sponsor. PHP Storm is a cutting edge IDE tailored specifically for PHP and web developers. If you haven't tried it before, or it's been a while since you used it last, now's the perfect time to check it out. PHP Storm recently received significant performance enhancements and has an ever expanding feature set. I'm a recent convert to PHP Storm and I love it. One of my favorite features is the ability to create a scratch file to quickly test something in isolation from the rest of our project. 
If we're testing PHP code, it will even run that code on multiple versions of PHP using 3v4l.org. Curious to see if it's the right fit for you? Head over to jetbrains.com slash phpstorm to learn more and try it out with a free 30-day trial. Code smarter, not harder. Now we still have a lot of errors that we have to clean up, and there are essentially two options for what we can do here. The first is that we can fix all the errors. And that's not a great idea because it might take a lot of time and you just might not want to spend that. The second one is that we can create a baseline and then use the baseline to ignore the initial set of errors. A baseline file helps us define the expected errors and warnings for our existing code base. It's a great way to tackle legacy projects with a large number of issues without being overwhelmed by the number of problems. To generate our baseline, we will run PHP stand with our generate baseline command line argument. If we look inside of this file, it's essentially a long list of all of the errors that we saw from before, but in a format that PHP stand can read. Now, if we run PHP stand again with the baseline file included, it won't find any errors. So now PHP stand is happy and only new issues will show up as they're added. Now, the command line tool is getting a little out of hand and I'm getting sick of typing it over and over again. Thankfully, PHP stand has our backs and allows us to use configuration files. In the configuration file, we can specify various settings like the level of strictness, directories to include or exclude from analysis, and much more. It's a powerful tool for tailoring PHP stand to our specific project requirements. PHP stand uses a configuration format called Neon. It's very similar to YAML, so if you're familiar with YAML, you can also write Neon. We're going to convert our command line into this configuration file. By default, PHP looks for the phpstand.neon file by default. So it's best to name the file phpstand.neon so we can really reduce down what we're typing. Now we can run it with no parameters at all. Now you might be wondering how we can run PHP stand in order to catch these bugs. And I like to run PHP stand in two places. The first place is that I like to add it as part of my GitHub actions. This makes sure that as I push code to GitHub, it's checking all of these problems. And if it finds an error, it'll report it back to me and not allow that to get to my customer. I also like to run it as part of my pre-commit script inside of the git hooks directory. This prevents the bad files from even making it to GitHub to run. This two-tiered approach gives us a safe base by running the tool on all the files in the GitHub actions, and then quickly get feedback on just the files we're changing. As a recap, PHP stand is a static code analysis tool that finds bugs. Pick a level and run the tool to find any errors, and then generate a baseline to ignore any existing errors. We'll want to run it locally and as part of our GitHub actions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter and phpc.social at Scott Keck Warren. We would love to hear how we can help you and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.